Hi Flosstube, it's Jen from Delicious Threads. Today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2017, and it's been about a month since my last update video, and I have a lot to show you. January was pretty busy as usual. We had um, a lot of family birthdays, including my daughter turning three, um, and then my dad also has a birthday, and my sister and my grandmother, and there's a bunch of birthdays in January. Um, my husband became partner at his law firm, and one of our cats had to have surgery. Uh, he had a tumor on his thyroid, so we had to have the thyroid removed. Uh, he seems to be doing really well. I actually took him in today, and he got his stitches out, and everything looks fine. So really happy about that. Um, yeah, lots of family time, lots of stitching time. I have five finishes to show you. Five. Four of them are from January, and one is my first February finish, and I just finished it last night. I'm just going to jump right in. My first finish was a carryover from 2016, and that is my train ornament. This was a dimensions kit, and it's just called train ornament. Um, this is the first time I stitched on perforated plastic, and I really liked it. I commented before about how the needle just kind of slides right through the plastic, and it made this a really good and easy purse project. So this is one that I stitched on ornament places. My only change was the green in this area. The center part was supposed to be the lightest green and um, this darker area is supposed to be this green but I used the wrong color but I think it looks good. I just need to put a little hanger on there and do a little felt backing and this will be ready to give my sister and her family for this Christmas. My second finish was my new year new start so I started this on January 1st um, I actually originally started it on this, it's just regular black Ada, and I hated it, I didn't get very far, and then it took a couple days, and then I decided to dye my own fabric, and here it is. This ornament is called Snow, it's by Val's Stuff, and it is in one of the Just Cross Stitch ornament magazines. I think it might be 2015. I'll double check and put the info below. Um, in the charted, uh, this is a little different than charted, in the chart the center of these O's have little tiny buttons and there are stitch details in the corners with another little button in the corner. It makes it a square shape. And I looked through my buttons and I didn't have anything that I wanted to use and didn't want to buy buttons. And so I just left it like this and I really like it. I need to figure out how I'm going to finish it, if I'm going to do it in a hoop, or um, I might try a different finishing technique. I'm not sure yet. When I do, I'll show you. My next finish was also a new start this year, and it is Nasty Woman. And this is just a simple font, cross-stitch font, um, and I freehanded these flowers. This is based on a design that I saw on Etsy um, with a similar font and the flowers are cross-stitched and I've been really itching to try embroidering some flowers like this and I decided to finally do it. So this is my version of that cross-stitched hoop and I'll link it down below in case you're interested in the cross-stitch version. Um, these flowers are called woven wheels, also called like spider web stitch or something and they are a lot easier than they looked um, like I said I watched some videos and just gave it a try and I'm really glad I did I'm going to definitely be embroidering more flowers like this um, I did some French knots here and these leaves I also looked up videos on YouTube to get ideas for how to stitch the leaves I painted my hoop just this charcoal gray color with regular craft paint. It matches the gray that I used for the letters. And I really like this way, the way this one turned out. Um, I started to finish the back and then I decided I might wait so that I could do a little tutorial video on my favorite way to finish hoops. So hopefully I get a chance to do that soon. My fourth finish for January once Upon a Time Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I have a couple changes in here. It is stitched on the called for fabric. 
Um, I changed the color for the months and then I stitched my border in 844, the, the gray color that is in the center. I didn't like the blue. Um, and then I left a couple other things out, but nothing, nothing big. So this is what it looks like. Really happy this is done. My daughter's really excited that it's done because it was for her. Hoping to get it framed soon. Um, at the end of the year, I just had a little bit left in December to do. There's that. And then at the bottom, I had the dilemma trying to figure out what I was going to do because it had the year in there, which is 2014. But I started this in 2014 and I stitched on it every year through 2017. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to put there. And somebody in one of my videos suggested that I use the end. And I loved that idea. So I charted it out. I had to tweak the border a little bit to give more room for the letters um, because the numbers were smaller and closer to the center and I needed extra space for the letters to fit in there. So I shifted these down and kind of changed the shape a little bit of the bottom there. I might go back and add a couple things after seeing the whole piece together. Um, I do want to go back, I think, and add some pink in these crowns. It's charted with some pink in them, but I left them out at first, and I think I do need that. And then in October, I left the um, Magic Sparkles out, and I think I'm going to go back and add at least a few near the Fairy Godmother's wand to show that she's casting a spell. Other than that, this is done. Really happy to have that one finished. That was probably my oldest whip. My last finish to show you is number five for the year, my first for February, just finished it last night. This was a purse project and it's Home Sweet Home. This is in Cross Stitch Crazy Magazine number 218. I used the colors as charted and I just used 28 count white Monaco. And I'm really happy this one's done. Not sure how I wanna finish it yet. I might do another hoop finish, um, maybe in a different with a different technique and then I can show that in my tutorial too or maybe I'll use my favorite technique because it is my favorite. Yay! Um, I also worked on a whip. I restarted a project that I wasn't happy with on the fabric that I had originally started it on and I have a bunch of new starts. So like I said, January was really busy. First, my restart was my Emerald City. And if you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen this. I originally started it on Platinum Ada that I had in my stash. And I didn't get very far before realizing that I just didn't like it. And I think the theme is that I just don't like stitching on Ada anymore. Um, with this one too, it was also the color. I saw other people stitching it on like aqua fabric or light blue and I thought it looked really pretty. So I wanted to dye some fabric for this project and I finally did. And I dyed this piece, this light aqua color. And I just used Rit dye and it's all one color, it's not modeled or anything. And I started stitching on it again. Um, I think my last one I just got like the three windows and I knew that that wasn't gonna make me happy. Really like the way this looks. Very happy with my choice to switch this color and to dye my own fabric. And this is just a 28 count Monaco that I dyed. Um, when I dye it tends to shrink to like a 30 count so this will be slightly smaller than the charted but close enough. Really love it. And I've got my Wicked Witch needle minder. Let's see. My, I'll go ahead and show you uh, one of the whips that I did and then I can show you all the new starts after. Um, I've worked a little bit on alphabet learning. So I already had the octopus and then for a stitch along in one of the groups, I had started on my rabbit and I didn't get too far. So this project that I originally said, if I was going as slow as I was at that time, it would take me until 2018. I think it's now gonna take me until like 2020, but that's okay. And I have a little enamel unicorn. All right, new starts. I finally started Death by Cross Stitch. So happy. I love this project. It's going to take me forever, but I love, 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 love this project. That is what I have gotten done. I think I stitched on this maybe four nights. 
I am stitching it on 40 Count Misty Rain by Lakeside Linens. And the floss is silk hand dyed floss from Silks For You. And I got the whole hank. And um, I'm stitching it one over two. This is the first time I've stitched with one thread. It's the first time I've stitched with silk. It's the first time I've stitched on 40 count and I am loving all of it. Really love it. Um, I like how neat the stitches are stitching with one thread. I like how like silky smooth the silk is going through the threads. I like how detailed and tiny this is, especially since the project is going to be super big. I just really love all of it and want to stitch on this all the time. <laughs> um, the floss, the silk is variegated and I'm not stitching each X individually because I feel like that would drive me insane. So I wanted to see what it looked like if I stitched a row at a time and see if you could see the vari variegation. And you can. I can see some of the color changes there. So I'm happy with doing a row at a time and I'm going to keep stitching it like that. Really glad that's working out too because I might go crazy if I had to stitch each X individually to get a nice result. <clears throat> Another new start. Um, doing the Fabulous Women in History Sal by Clouds Factory. And I haven't gotten too far on this one. I only stitched on it for like two nights, I think. So this one is Eleanor Roosevelt. I got a decent chunk of her done. I do need to get back to it. She's kind of just floating here. There's going to be a chair. <laughs> and the second part of this has already been released. And I'm hoping to get caught up at some point. And I have my um, Frida. Needle minder on there. Love this fabric too, it's super pretty. I said I wasn't going to do the Frosted Pumpkin yearly sale, and after seeing the border parts come out and seeing people stitching it up, I fell in love. I'm in love with this border. I think it's so pretty. I love the leaves. I just, it's nice. Um, so I decided to go ahead and get it. And I bought the kit, so I have the crystal linen. See a little sparkle there. And that's how far I got. I think I stitched on this for like three nights. I used to have a, um, an, uh, what is it, Grumpy Cat needle minder on there that my husband picked out, which I thought was really funny considering it's happily ever after. Um, and I, the last time I stitched on this, I had to restitch this purple line three times before it was right. And I blame Grumpy Cat, so I kicked him out. And I have um, just a little sparkly heart that will probably fit better with the theme. <sighs> yeah. Let's see. So I think that's it for what I stitched on. Um, it's been fun to kind of bounce around. I've been trying to follow some of the stitch alongs in Stitch Mania and in Cross Stitch It's Fun. And it's, so I've been able to like bounce around with some projects and it's given me excuses to pull out things that I wanted to start and to work on some of my older whips. And I'm going to keep doing that because... It's fun. It makes it fun. I don't participate in everything, only the ones that kind of call to me and work with what I want to be doing anyway. Uh, let's see. Stitch from Stash. January. I spent a lot. Um, at the end of January, I, was, I am negative $127 and some change. And that's with four finishes, so I did spend a lot. Um, not too bad. Um, I did, I posted in the group and commented, I uh, was just joking around saying like, hey, is there going to be a consolation prize for the person that does the worst at this challenge and is the most negative? And I got a couple of comments about like, oh, why are you doing this? Like, maybe you should, you know, actually try or you shouldn't participate. And I thought that was kind of silly. And, um, 
the challenge is really just challenging yourself and we're not competing with each other. There isn't a right way or a wrong way to do it, I don't think. And for me, that was probably actually a good month. I probably spent less than I normally would because um, I, I got some things that are going to be like stash items that I'm going to use throughout the year and like a new pattern and a kit. So things that I'm actually using um, as opposed to just buying everything I feel like buying. Um, and it motivated me to finish some things. I had four finishes in January. Two of them were carryovers from 2016 and were close to being finished, but the other two were new starts that I like stitched and finished in a month. Last year I had two finishes the whole year, so I'm already, I feel like, doing better than I was before. And my challenge for myself is different than anybody else's challenge for themselves. And that's fine. Don't compare yourselves. Um, I feel like I am doing the challenge. I'm not ruining the spirit of it. Um, so whatever. Speaking of, let's talk about haul. I have some things that I haven't shown you yet. They were things that I ordered before the end of the year that I hadn't gotten yet when I recorded last. So these don't count against Stitch from Stash. I am a serial center starter and um, I there are a couple of patterns that I think would be easier to start in a corner so I got myself a stitch starter and so this helps you measure in from the corner so that you can give yourself enough border on the edges and this is from Blue Ribbon Designs on Etsy. Haven't used it yet um, but I'm looking forward to it. I placed an order with 123 Stitch. Um, I was looking for something that I could stitch for my sister. She's graduating from college in June. Uh, she's doing marine science degree. And I have a big Mira mermaid that I want to stitch for her, but it's going to take way too long to finish that. So I wanted to get something smaller that I could finish before her graduation in June. And so I found Beach Day by Country Cottage Needleworks. And it says, every day should be a beach day. And I thought that was really cute. She is moving in. She just moved in with her boyfriend. They're going to be moving into um, their own house together, I think, this summer. So it should be perfect timing to give her a little something to put up on her walls. At the same time I ordered that, I ordered a bunch of floss. Don't know why I didn't think to get the flosses for this. I'll probably just use DMC. Um, but I was going through and listing out all of the hand dyed threads that I would need for Country Cottage Needleworks Cottage of the Month and the Country Cottage Needleworks Seasonal Celebrations. Um, and originally I was just going to do DMC for those and then uh, I decided as a Christmas present to myself I was going to get the hand dyed threads for those projects because they're going to be big projects, things that I'm going to display, and I just thought it would be nice. They call for a mixture of threads. So these are the Weeks Dye Works. And so this is for multiple, multiple patterns. And I'm not going to show you these each individually. If you see one that you want to know the name of, just let me know. So that's Weeks Dye Works. Classic Color Works. These are probably the most colorful of the bunch. And I have some Gast of Gentle Arts sample threads. And I have some gas I haven't stitched with yet, but I haven't stitched with Classic Color Works, and this is my first little bit of those. Looking forward to starting those projects so I can see how these stitch up and how beautiful they'll be. I also got myself some fabric. Um, I pulled out the fabric that I bought to stitch the hands-on designs, um, year in chalk pieces and I went to go pull it out to cut it up so that I would have each little piece ready to go for the different months because um, I was planning to do that for the Stitch Mania year of starts on the 17th of each month and I laid it out and I decided I didn't like the color. It's too green. Um, I went on the hunt again for the Weeks Dye Works gunmetal fabric that the pattern calls for because I had a hard time finding it before which is why I went with the other fabric that I chose. And I found a place finally that showed that they had 30 count gunmetal in stock. So I placed my order and then it turned out they didn't have it. So we're going to talk a little bit about customer service. Um, I talked in a couple videos or a couple videos ago about ABC Stitch 
and how I had had a negative experience with them not having something in stock and not letting me know and there not being any communication and then me having to contact them and getting sort of, I don't know, borderline rude or non-caring responses. Um, and I just wasn't really impressed and don't plan to shop there again. This is the opposite. I ordered from Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and their customer service is amazing. They didn't have the 30 count in stock. I got a call the very next day. I, f I hope I'm remembering her name right. I think it was Lindy that called me, and she called and said, you know, really sorry, we don't have the 30 count in stock, but we do have 28 count or 32 count if one of those would work for you. So I switched to 32 count. She cut it and shipped it right away, and I had it a couple days later. That is good customer service. So I have a half yard piece of Weeks Dye Works gunmetal in 32 count. I still need to cut this down. Um, hopefully I can get to that soon so that I can start my urine chalk pieces. I also got some stitchery tape. Uh, I'm going to try to do some more finishing this year. I have a bunch of pieces that are not done that I don't necessarily want to have professionally framed. Um, so I'm going to try to do some mounting myself. I think that's it for the things I purchased before the beginning of the year. So the things I purchased in January that did count against me for Stitch from Stash are these. First... I bought a bunch of hanks of silk from Silks For You and they were having a sale on some of the threads and I wanted to get a few different colors. They're full hanks which means that I can stitch pretty much any larger pattern that I want that's single color or if I want to make it single color or I have a bunch of different colors now that I could use for other things. I got a black Maybe I can take this out. I got this light blue, avocado green. It's really pretty, kind of turquoisey blue, pink, like a raspberry pink and it's really beautiful purple. I don't have specific plans for those yet. Um, originally I thought that it would be fun to use some of those for the linen and threads mystery sampler, but I'm not planning to start that soon at all. Um, so who knows, I might find another use for them before I ever start that. I also, continue with my silk obsession. I got some oops packs from Dinky Dyes on Etsy. I got a pastel pack, a jewel tone pack, and one of the assortment packs. I really love this color right here. And then they threw these in as the little freebie thank you and I think those would look really cool in like a Halloween piece. What else did I get? Oh, I got um, the Happily Ever After kit because I didn't want to have to go buy my threads and stuff. Um, I have a full set, but I'm having a hard time finding all of my threads. And when I searched, I only could find about four of the colors. So um, I just went ahead and ordered that. And then I don't have to wait for the fabric from Picture This Plus. Um, yeah, so that was one of the things I got. And I also got the first part of the pattern um, from Stitchrovia's Charity Sow. And um, I am planning to stitch that at some point. I'm not starting it anytime soon. So I'll probably wait to get the other pieces until I'm actually ready to start, but I did buy that. So that was all of the stuff that counted against me for a stitch from Stash. I also got a little, I guess kind of like a Christmassy present, happy holiday present, present from my um, Year of Whips partner, Sadie. She is on Floss Tube as Yarnivore. I'll link her channel down below so you can check her out. And she hand dyes silk floss. And look at those. Aren't those pretty? Can't wait to find something to use these for. Thank you again, Sadie. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to stitch with these. 
that's it for my buying stuff, I think. Um, for plans, I'm just stitching whatever I feel like stitching. I am following along with some of the stitch alongs um, in Stitch Mania and Cross Stitch It's Fun. I am participating in the magazine sale, um, and I'll, I'll link these things down below uh, so that you can check them out if you want. Um, I'm also doing freebie February. I have a freebie pattern from Hands On Design. Let's see, do I have it? I do. Um, this just came out yesterday, actually. It's called L-O-V-E, and it's on um, the blog. You can just download it there. And um, I haven't picked my colors yet. I'm probably going to stitch it on gray, but I'm going to do different colors. I'm going to do like our wedding colors, which were uh, red, black, and white. And then, um, I don't know. I'm also doing a free B score new pattern. So those will be like freebie February things. I don't know how many new starts I'll have for that, but I am trying to stitch more free stuff just cause it's fun and, um, it makes it accessible for lots of other people too. Uh, I'm also doing an ornament stitch along with cross stitch. It's fun where you can do it one of two ways. Either you stitch an ornament each month of the year, so you'll have 12 ornaments, or you stitch an ornament every other month, and then on the off months, you finish it with the same way that they are teaching in um, a finishing tutorial. So they do like a, um, a video series where they're going to show people different finishing techniques. So that's really fun. I'm planning to stitch one each month because I'm not sure how I want to stitch things, or to finish things. Um, and I'm not sure that I want to commit to the way that things are being finished because you get points for your house and I'm in Froggen. I don't know if anybody else is in there doing stitch wets. Um, but that's how you get your house points. And I want to have lots of handmade ornaments at the end of the year. So I'm just planning to stitch one each month. I'm probably going to participate in the tutorials and I maybe try some of them out, but like I won't get extra points because I'm already getting the points from stitching the individual ornaments. Uh, let's see. Oh, bullet journal. I have wanted to kind of start one and I kept putting off a bullet journal because I already have a planner and so I didn't need the calendar part of it. Um, but I was watching Rachel Danowitz's video where she talked about her bullet journal and seeing it made me really want to just do it. And I decided that for me, I just won't have the calendar stuff in there. I can do the other things. So I have, um, I'm doing a habit tracker for February, but my big thing was I wanted to track my stitching. And I know a lot of people track their stitching, um, tracking things like stitches that you've put in each day, and that's crazy to me. So I'm just keeping track of what I stitched on each day. And then I'm also going to use my bullet journal to track things like important things that happen in our lives, like memories to keep track of, because it's really easy to forget all of the awesome things that you've experienced. And so I'm hoping to use it as a way to chronicle the things that I've done. Um, I have a bunch of post-its at the beginning because... I was really stuck on how I wanted to start it and I decided to just skip that and go to the fun stuff. So I'm going to get back to those things. I'm going to track like my reading and other things for the year. Uh, here is what I did for my January project tracker. And before I actually wrote this all out, I made my project tracker in Excel to see what I would want it to look like and then I just copied it into here. So I have my little key that shows what each of my colors mean. And I have all my pattern or all of my projects down the side and just marked like what I did during that month. And then I started February's also and it's basically the same but set up slightly differently. Um, just seems a little cleaner. So I'm playing with it to see what I like. It's fun to fill in the little blocks at the end of the day with what you worked on. Um, it's kind of like a little journal for your projects. Um, as I work on that more, I might show you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah. Last thing, uh, Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff started Tag Your Awesome. And it's where if somebody tags you, you tag two other floss tubers that you think are awesome. And you kind of talk about them a little bit. So Stephanie from Stephanie's Tiny X's did a little shout out for me for Tag You're Awesome, and I really appreciate that, Stephanie. Thank you. So my two people. 
the first person I am going to tag your awesome is Trisha from 3L Threads. And Trisha, I think, was the floss tuber that made me really get into floss tube. I had watched a couple other videos from different people, um, and I enjoyed them, but I wasn't hooked yet. And then I started watching Trisha when she was doing her vlogging for Stitch Mania, and she's hilarious. I loved seeing her projects. I loved that it was very real and um, I love that she has her kids in the background being kids. Um, I have kids that are similar in age and I know how difficult it is to be able to do anything and props to you because you do a great job and like I, I don't know I try to record when they're napping or at school because I can't concentrate. I don't know how you get anything done. Um, you're hilarious and just keep going. I love I love your videos. The second person that I'm going to tag, you're awesome, is Stephanie from Lindy Stitches. Stephanie is so bubbly and bright and I love her projects. I love the cute patterns that she designs. Um, I love watching her. Every time I watch one of her videos, I come away with a smile on my face. You can't watch her video and still be grumpy about whatever was going on. You are happy by the time you finish watching one of her videos. So tag your awesome ladies. It's your turn. And that's it. Um, I'm not sure when I'll record again, but hopefully not too far in the future. And next time I hope to have a lot to show you. And until then, happy stitching.